Well, good morning, dear saints. It's great to be with you again today. This is uh, Pastor Mercer here with you. Uh, thanks for joining me. This is your devotion for August 2nd. Our psalm for today is Psalm 71, the first eight verses. Our New Testament reading comes from the book of Acts. As Paul finishes up his uh, defense by uh, recounting his conversion here to King Agrippa. And then we will see that Paul will be then setting, um, setting off for Rome, sailing to Rome. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be to me a rock of refuge to which I may continually come. You have given the command to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Rescue me, O my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of the unjust and cruel man. For you, O Lord, are my hope, my trust, O Lord, from my youth. Upon you I have leaned from before my birth. You are he who took me from my mother's womb, My praise is continually of you. I have been as important to many, but you are my strong refuge. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. Boy, there's there's a lot of great stuff here in this psalm. He is our rock and our fortress. You know, when you think of a rock, you think of a fortress. That never changes. It's the same all the time. Nothing, no matter what comes against it, it cannot, uh, those forces, those, the enemies cannot prevail. God is our refuge. He is our fortress. He has saved us. He continues to save us. And as David says here, he is our rock. He is my rock and my fortress. And it says that he, he has leaned Uh, upon him from before his birth. Uh, Just when you look at that, uh, we know that uh, from the scriptures here, then this is giving us an indication certainly that even a a child before birth here is able to call upon the name of the Lord. That is, have faith to know and trust and believe in, in God. All right, shall we turn our attention to Acts chapter 26. And Paul, and as Paul was saying these things in his defense, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, you are out of your mind. Your great learning is driving you out of your mind. But Paul said, I am not out of my mind, most excellent Festus, but I am speaking true and rational words. For the king knows about these things, and to him I speak boldly. For I am persuaded that none of these things has escaped his notice, for this has not been done in a corner. King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know that you believe. And Agrippa said to Paul, in a short time, would you persuade me to be a Christian? And Paul said, whether short or long, I would to God that not only you but also all who hear me this day might become such as I am, except for these chains. Then the king rose and the governor and Bernice and those who were sitting with them. And when they had withdrawn, they said to one another, this man is doing nothing to deserve death or imprisonment. And Agrippa said to Festus, this man could have been set free if he had not appealed to Caesar. And when it was decided that we should sail for Italy, they delivered Paul and some other prisoners to a centurion of the Augustan cohort named Julius. And embarking in a ship of Adramidium, 
which was about to sail to the ports along the coast of Asia, Asia, we put to sea, accompanied by Aristarchus, a Macedonian from Thessalonica. The next day we put in at Sidon, and Julius treated Paul kindly and gave him leave to go to his friends and be cared for. And putting out the sea from there, we sailed under the lee of Cyprus, because the winds were against us. And when we had sailed across the open sea along the coast of Cilicia and Pamphylia, we came to Myra and Lycia. There the centurion found the ship of Alexandria sailing for Italy and put us on board. We sailed slowly for a number of day days and arrived with difficulty off uh, Canidus. And as the wind did not allow us to go farther, we sailed under the lee of Crete off uh, Salm Salmon. Coasting along it with difficulty, we came to a place called Fair Havens, near which was the city of Lycia. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, Paul finishes telling his, uh, his, uh, of, of his conversion. And Notice what, uh, notice what Festus does here as he gets up and he, uh, this is very interesting, but he, with a loud voice, he accuses Paul. He tells Paul that he's, you're crazy. You've lost it, Paul. You're out of your mind. What is your deal? And how does Paul, does Paul answer uh, in the same way as his accusers are speaking to him? No, he says, most excellent Festus, I am speaking true and rational words. For the king knows about these things, and to him I speak boldly. And then look at what he asked, he asked King Agrippa. He says, he says, do you believe the prophets? I know that you believe. And Agrippa here, it seems like he kind of brushes off Paul, and he's, would you persuade me in a short time to become a Christian? Paul says, well, whether a short time or a long time, it doesn't matter, and, and anyone here who is within the sound of my voice, I would pray that they would all come to faith as well, he's saying. And then it's, it's almost as if Agrippa, his own conscience is bothering him, and he has, to, he has to leave. He has to get out of the presence of Paul. And what's, what's the result of this? Agrippa says to Festus then, this man could have been set free if he had not appealed to Caesar. So this has been laid in place, and this isn't just happenstance that this is all happening. God is ordering all of these things with Paul in order that he would set sail to Rome. And we, we're going to see that as, as, uh, as he's sailing to Rome and all of these things that take place, God has ordered the steps of Paul and continues to uh, and even without getting ahead of myself, but when you get to the end of Acts, then we see that, that Paul, even while he's under house arrest, basically there in Rome, that he continues to share the good news of, of Christ. Well, God has other plans for Paul. This isn't, this isn't the end. All right. Well, uh, as I'm looking at this one, I was looking, thinking of the third petition of the Lord's Prayer. Let me, turn, let me turn there. The third petition says this, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What does this mean? The good and gracious will of God is done even without our prayer, but we pray in this petition that it may be done among us also. How is God's will done? God's will is done when he breaks and hinders every evil plan and purpose of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature, which do not want us to hallow God's name or let his kingdom come. And when he strengthens and keeps us firm in his word and faith until we die, this is his good and gracious will. God would will, dear saints, that you and I would not fall away from faith. Uh, the Holy Spirit continues to regenerate and new us, renew us daily in our baptism. You rise every day in newness of life in Christ. Dear Saint, today, don't despair as you, as you look at the sinful, helpless creature that you see yourself as. Because 
It is there that Christ has died for you. He died for all of those sins. All of the sins of your past, all of your sins today, you live in that sure and present reality. The sins of your future even, Christ has forgiven you. This is not something that... Uh, that uh, this isn't this this is this is truth this is the certainty that we have this isn't something i'm i'm just telling you that's what your baptism is you have been sealed with the promise you are god's child on those days when you struggle and you're in despair remember that remember your baptism this is what uh, pastor randy and i are always uh, reminding folks of here remember your baptism Remember who you are, your identity in Christ. Your identity is not in those sins and those things you struggle with because you are, as Scripture tells us, we, you are a new man in Christ. All things are new, because not because of something you've done or you're not doing, but it's because of what Christ is doing for you and continues to do for you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, the uh, ship, uh, the, the journey on the ship continues and now in Acts uh, chapter 27. Come back and join me tomorrow and we'll, uh, we'll take a look at that together. God's peace be with you today. I'll see you again tomorrow.